Hey everybody, people always ask me, Manny, what tools should I be using for my Amazon business? Well, this episode is brought to you by Helium10.com. These are the same tools I use to generate six figures per month with Amazon FBA. I get keyword research, product tracking, listing optimization, search term tracking, account monitoring, and a lot of other brand new money pulling tools that are gonna be released to Helium10 members on a regular basis. If you're gonna grab any tools, check these out. Seriously, get a massive advantage with the tools that top sellers are using right now. Okay, and they're all in one place. Some tools and services will have a user cap, so get in there as quickly as you can. That's helium10.com. H E L I U M 10.com. Warning the following podcast has been classified as insanely lucrative. Listener discretion is advised. It's awesome. They're saying, you know what? After listening to you and doing the things you were saying, you were doing it a little different than everybody else. I'm now at uh, a very good level. Some of these guys were doing five figures. One guy was actually doing uh, more than I am. Your attention, please. 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 Listening to the AMPM podcast may cause recurring revenue streams and unfair un- unfair advantages over your competitors. Other side effects may include ba- ba- better wallets, fired bosses, and longer vacations. Listen at your own risk. Here's your host, seven-figure entrepreneur and online marketing madman, Manny Coates. Manny Coates. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the AMPM podcast. My name is Manny Coates, and I will be your host. And this is the show where we discuss how to generate recurring revenue streams 24 hours per day during the AM and the PM, hence the name of the show. As a matter of fact, I was in LA. I was there for an event and I was networking with a bunch of large, huge monthly figure FBA sellers. Guys that are doing seven figures per month. One guy doing eight figures per month. Crazy stuff. While doing that, I was making money. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. So today I want to make an announcement. I actually did this on our Facebook group, uh, FBA High Rollers. If you're not a member, definitely go check it out. Over 7,000 members strong, very active. But I posted in the group while I was in Austin, I was out there for the amazing summit. I was a speaker there for two of the days. And while I was sitting at the bar with Guy, we were uh, there before the event, hanging out, strategizing, talking about different things, I hit the $1 million sale mark, $1 million sales mark on uh, Amazon FBA private label. And so I'm super excited, a million dollars. I was actually trying to uh, hit way less than that. If you guys go back to the very beginning episodes, the podcast episodes, my goal in episode number one of the podcast was to hit a quarter million dollars by the end of this year. So that was $250,000. You'll also remember that I started this journey back in December. So it's only been just over nine months. It's not even a full year yet. So to hit a million dollars in sales in less than a year, uh, zero to a million dollars in nine months, essentially, I'm just super, super excited. And uh, I wanted to share it with you guys. And you know, there's a lot of you in the group that are crushing it as well. Um, I want to start posting some stories and talking to people in our group. I'm I'm gonna actually start doing this on a regular basis, I think, where you guys have been with me since the beginning. I actually met a bunch of you at the uh, Amazing Summit, came up to me and said, hey man, I've been listening to your podcast since episode one. And we're now at, uh, what, 70 episodes or so. And it's awesome. They're saying, you know what, after listening to you and doing the things you were saying, you were doing it a little different than everybody else. I'm now at uh, a very good level. Some of these guys were doing five figures. One guy was actually doing uh, more than I am, which was awesome. I love hearing that kind of stuff. So uh, super awesome. I'm going to break some of the numbers down uh, so that everybody's clear on what's going on here. First of all, these numbers, um, as of today, as of the time of the podcast, it's at $1,031,339.53. That does not include merch by Amazon. Okay, so merch.amazon.com, that's a whole separate program. I'm actually going to be doing a series of podcasts on that. I generate about $12,000 per month in sales on that, over $75,000 so far since I entered the program. Pretty cool. Um, but that does not include those figures. That's a whole separate thing. This is only Amazon FBA private label revenue. So a million dollars total units was 29,698 units, okay? Uh, That's how many products were actually shipped out. Uh, So 29,000, there was approximately 26,000 total orders over the course of the nine months. The average sales order item was around $39. It says $39.17, so 
keeping it pretty high. I always talk to you guys and say, you know what, you should try to go for the higher priced items. That's what I think now. Certainly, if you've got lower priced items and you're crushing it, that's fantastic. I have some products like that as well. But when you get into the higher priced items, the heavier items, uh, things that cost you, you know, $10 or more to actually source, uh, you're going to be eliminating a vast majority of suppliers or sorry, sellers that are going out to these suppliers to actually get this inventory because it's much easier, especially for small guys that are getting in now. Uh, if they have a $2,000 budget to start with, it's easier for them to get, you know, a $2 product. They can get a thousand of those, right? Versus if they're getting a $20 product, they can only get a hundred so they just skip it. They're like, that's ah, too much. It's too expensive. The risk is too high for them. So, and they're going to run out of inventory very quickly and not have the funds available to reorder. Anyways, a million dollars uh, profit margins. The, I've always said this in every Periscope and every podcast that I do that I, I'm not up there at the 40, 50% range that some people are claiming. Um, I just don't see it. I'm somewhere down around the 20% margin range, right? 20 to 30% depending on the month. And um, that's kind of where I'm at with this, you know, and I factor everything in guys. So I'm, I'm talking about the shipping costs, the manufacturing costs, the cost that it takes to get out here. Um, there's costs once it gets into the ports, right? And you got uh, import duty fees and you got to get it over to Amazon, the packaging, all that stuff. And once you get it to Amazon and they start fulfilling for you, you know, you've got your FBA fees, you got your referral fees, right? 15% uh, there. And then you have your promos. If it's a new product, you're going to have promo costs. Typically, you're giving things away at a discount, especially if you're using my launch strategy that I covered, I believe it was in episode 24. You're reducing your price point a lot, right? Um, at cost. So you're not, you're actually losing money because Amazon's charging you fees there. So you're losing money there. You're going to have refunds and returns, right? Um, and, and this doesn't include costs associated with overhead, you know, like uh, any overhead you have in your time and employees and things like that. But um, outside of that, yeah, it eats up a lot. 20% is pretty reasonable, I think. And off, off a million dollars, you know, it's $200,000. So not bad, right? I guess it's, uh, it's different for everybody. You know, some people are running on smaller margins, I'd imagine. I've never had somebody tell me that they're running below 20%. I, I seem, I don't know why, maybe... Maybe people don't know their numbers or maybe I'm just terrible with what I'm doing because I don't know anybody that's doing less than 20%. Everybody's always way up there, 40%, 50%. I got 60% margins. So um, either people just aren't calculating correctly, they're not being honest maybe, or they just got uh, everything dialed in and they have really good products. But uh, for me, I'm at about, uh, I'm right around 20%, sometimes a little higher. My overall percentage is lower for the whole year than what I am doing per month now because in the beginning, I wasn't very efficient with my pay-per-click. I wasn't efficient with my launch strategies and promos and so I lost some money there. I was, uh, my, my margins were less than they should have been. So let me think, uh, what else should I mention about this? It was, it was awesome. Let me tell you the story though, it's kind of funny. So we're at the bar and um, you know, there's uh, gotta be 500, 600 Amazon sellers um, at the Hyatt, the hotel we're at, all on the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is brutal. It's terribly slow. And at the same time, this particular day, this was probably, uh, when was this? This was the, I believe the first week of September. You guys might have noticed that Amazon wasn't updating their sales figures. Everybody was showing $0 for the day. So there was a big panic. And um, I was logging back into Hello Profit, um, which I used to see where my margins and where everything's at. So that's keeping an accurate total. So I knew I was actually making sales, even though Amazon was saying I wasn't. Um, but I didn't have the total, right, for, the, for everything. Um, I was using Amazon statistics to do that. So I was waiting for it to update so I could do a screenshot. And uh, yeah, it was like later on in the evening, because it had been down all day. It was later on in the evening that it updated and we were at the bar and I clicked it and boom, it popped up and it was like 1 million, 3,000, whatever it was um, at the time. And uh, I had a drink in hand and gave Guy, Guillermo's there with me, gave him a, you know, a toast and it was pretty cool. So let me talk about uh, the numbers a little bit more because there's going to be a lot of people that haven't listened to all the earlier podcasts yet. And um, they're probably wondering, well, okay, a million dollars, but okay, how long have you been doing it? Well, I've been doing it nine months. I started in December. Okay. Um, how many SKUs do you have? Well, I have 13 SKUs up until this point. I have I have two new SKUs, so I'll have 15, but they haven't sold anything yet. They're sitting there in a suppressed state. Um, I haven't taken photos or done any, I haven't done anything. They actually arrived, all the inventory and everything arrived um, while I was in Austin. So um, 
I'll have 15, but all the numbers are off of 13 uh, SKUs over four brands. I have one account. Um, I'm probably going to be doing multiple accounts and separating things by company. Um, you know, people say, well, can you have more than one account? You know, Amazon doesn't want an individual to have more than one account, typically because they feel like you might manipulate the system, right? I mean, if you have five accounts and you're selling, you know, flashlights, you know, and, and you got uh, five different brands on five accounts, you can get, uh, you can monopolize the first page results with five different companies and five different products. And especially if you have multiple products per company, you could have the entire first page listing. So that would be bad, right? You're monopolizing it. Um, but if, if you were setting up a legitimate company, you know, as a separate account, you've got, uh, it's, it's a corporation or an LLC and, and it's got its own address and phone number and its own brand and tax ID. Everything is separate, right? You know, you're not commingling. You're not using the same people. Um, it's just you being the uh, founder of both companies. You should be fine. Um, you know, you, you want to uh, make sure that you're doing everything legitimately. And it's going to make things easier when it comes to selling the, the brand later on, if that's one of your exit strategies. Because if you have, you know, one company and it's got all these brands with all these different things in it, and you have a company that comes by and they want to they wanna buy one of the brands, it becomes a little bit more difficult to separate things out. So I'm not a professional when it comes to this kind of stuff by any means, whether, when it comes to the legal side of things, the corporate side of things, um, the, even the selling of businesses. I'm certainly going to be hiring people that, know what they're doing, where that's their profession, and bring them in to, to kind of handle this. So my first company or my first account is going to be a little bit of a mess because I got four brands in there all doing different things and they're all growing. But yeah, the new companies I want to expand in 2017 and get into uh, different marketplaces as well beyond Amazon. So that's another question that people ask as well. Are you only selling in the U.S. store or are you selling in Canada, the U.K.? And are you selling off of Amazon? And the answer to those is no, I'm not selling off of Amazon right now. I have all my eggs in one basket. Bad, bad, you know, slapping my own wrist. But again, it's only been not even a year. So I'm in the process of actually uh, expanding or getting, uh, getting the plan together to expand in 2017. Right now I'm gearing up for fourth quarter and I'm going to talk about that in just uh, a second as well. But um, I'm only selling on the Amazon uh, the, the U.S. store, Amazon.com. Um, I'm not on the Amazon.ca, the Canadian store yet. Um, everybody I've talked to has said it's just been not that good. Uh, literally just about everybody. Okay, nine out of ten people have said just don't do it. It's not worth it. People that are actually selling on the Canadian store have said they're going to be pulling their products and it's just uh, they're going to concentrate their efforts somewhere else. Europe, I heard, is really good. So I'd probably get into Europe before I get into the Canadian store. I did a podcast episode a few episodes back where <laughs> there's a, I don't know if you'd call it a hijacker, but there's a company there that's listing everybody's product in Canada. So if you go to the you know Amazon.ca store and do a search for your brand, your brand name, you're probably already on there, but it's being sold by another company. Check that out. It's not really impacting most people. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get into the European storefront, um, hopefully in 2017. I don't have the bandwidth right now for expanding out into 2000, or sorry, into uh, <laughs> other um, stores right now because fourth quarter is coming up. So I'm, I'm gearing up for that. We know that sales can jump up a lot, right? 3X, 4X uh, normal volumes. So I'm trying to focus on that, get everything in. I've got a prototype for a new product that I'm working on that I want to get finished and get in. And uh, that's just all, that's just taking all my time. Add on top of that, the podcast, the few periscopes that I do when I can, keeping up with our Facebook group, um, the FBA high rollers group, right? That's what we call it. And um, also developing the tools that we have over at Helium 10 and, uh, you know, all the testing and rolling that out has just kept me just super slammed. I would definitely recommend if you're shooting for big numbers, don't just start off with 10 products. Um, I know, I know uh, it seems like it would be the way to go, especially if you have the funding, but it's a lot harder. You know, I started off with, I, I added things incrementally, but when you add more than one product, now you have multiple things you've got to deal with, right? Not only that product listing, but the keyword research and maintenance of that one product, um, the pay-per-click and managing all that, the inventory control, right? Going out uh, to your suppliers and finding the product um, or negotiating new rates and bringing it in and tracking it. Now multiply that out by X number of products. Everything just kind of increases, right? So it gets, uh, gets a little bit more difficult. So um, think about that. Think whether that's what you want to do 
And um, also the other thing, one of the biggest topics that we were discussing when I was at the Amazing Summit, when I was dealing with the, or discussing, we were at the bar discussing topics with high level sellers. These were, I think almost every single guy I talked to was either a six figure or seven figure per month seller. And the issue that almost everybody was running into was cash flow. Almost every single person had loans because there's a point where you can't afford to buy any more inventory. And I'm kind of in that scenario right now because at the 12 month mark, things open up. Amazon starts providing lending. You can go to all these different services out there that can give you uh, cash, right? But you need 12 months. I'm not at 12 months. Tax returns and things like that that companies might want um, aren't even there yet. So there's just no history. Uh, so I'm at a point where it's kind of a bummer because I'm like, man, I need the, I, I would love to have an extra, you know, let's just say it's 400 grand uh, that I can put into inventory right now for a fourth quarter, but it's, you know, it's not there. I'm maxing out everything to get all the inventory that we can uh, to get through December. And if I had all these Amazon loans and so forth, I could, you know, double, triple, quadruple my, uh, my profits for the for fourth quarter. But, you know, I'm learning as I go. There are options, um, obviously, to raise cash if I want to. I know what those are. I know what it will take. And um, they're just not options I want to take or accept at the moment. So I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait it out. And uh, I'm definitely going to be talking about these things in the near future and bringing on guests that are experts at this kind of stuff. But it is a it is an issue that you're going to be running into because, you know, if you grow very quickly, think about this. If you start off with $10,000, and you have used it all to get inventory and the thing uh, sells like crazy, right? Amazon's not paying you for a couple of weeks after you've sold these units, but you already need to have an order on the way so that when you run out of inventory, you got a you know, new inventory coming in, which means you have to float that inventory, right? I mean, you got to basically pay another 10 grand, let's say, just to maintain the same amount of sales that you have to get that inventory in. So, and if you haven't gotten paid, well, how do you do it? And if you're selling really well, maybe it's not 10,000 now, maybe it's 20,000 or $30,000 that you've got to order worth of inventory. Um, and that's going to be, you know, if you want to have really good savings, you're going to send it by boat on, you know, by sea, and that's going to take a while. So it becomes, um, becomes problematic in terms of juggling everything, you know, that your growth rate can actually, it can stump you, right? So to speak. So, uh, Anyways, that's where I'm at, guys. I want to do this episode, $1 million. I'm super excited. Um, my goal now will be over the next 12 months to hit $2 million. Not $2 million total, but an additional $2 million over the next 12 months. So this time next year, I'll have hopefully reached $3 million in total sales. The million that I hit now, plus an additional $2 million. I'm mentioning it here on this podcast. Now, I'm not going to step away from FBA anytime soon um, unless for some crazy reason... Uh, you know, time restraints just don't allow me to expand as much as I want, um, or I start focusing on the software side more. But right now, I'm loving the FBA business side. It's super profitable, um, not 50% margin profitable, <laughs> but it's uh, it is definitely profitable and and fun. And you know, I like learning and and yeah, just hanging out with everybody in our group and seeing how everybody else is growing as well. So if you have questions, definitely go to the FBA High Rollers group. That's our Facebook group. If you're not a member there, you, you need to be, okay? Because that's where I'm learning a lot of stuff. It's where a ton of people are sharing their experiences. Um, and if you have a question, it's going to get answered. It doesn't have to be answered by me. There's, like I said, 7,000 plus people in there, probably 8,000 by now. And you can go in there. It's called FBA High Rollers. If you don't want to search it on Facebook, just go to our our uh, our website, go to AMPM, right? AMPM podcast.com. And uh, there's a Facebook link over on the top right. You can click that and it'll take you right to the group. And uh, check out the tools. We, you know, we're always putting whatever tools we're using uh, in that link up there on our AMPM podcast site. If you have questions, make sure to um, leave them. I'm looking for some voicemail questions. Those are cool, right? We'll get you on the, on the podcast. But um, post on the AMPM podcast website, there's a little, uh, there's a link there that you can actually leave a voicemail and I'd love to uh, bring those onto the show. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, definitely subscribe on iTunes so that we don't miss anything. And um, yeah, I, I think that's about it, guys. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Keep crushing it. And I'll talk to you guys soon. You've been listening to the AMPM podcast hosted by Manny Coates. For more information, insider tools, and to get the resources mentioned in this episode, visit ampmpodcast.com.